Yo, everybody. Before I get started, let me sort out the most important things. Echo Falls. Hello to the 10 people in the room. My name is Mark Ashley Dupay. You are watching me live on Beam IG, and this is Mondays with Mark Ashley with the chit chat. And um, today I am going to be interviewing a good friend of mine from, you know, roundabout, Mr. Albert Gold. We're going to be spilling the tea, we're going to be listening to his music, all his new track, Satellite. We're going to be talking lockdown. We're going to be doing it all. So um, this is my first one. So there might be a few um, teething problems. But, you know, we come through. Long time friend. You know this. Um, Albert, I'm just waiting for, like, a few more people to, like, enter the chat. So that, yeah, I don't want them to miss out on nothing. So make sure your drinks are ready. Because, you know, we're going to get into it. Keep topping up the Echo Falls. Big love to Shivs for giving me this opportunity to chat shit for an hour or two, depending on how drunk I get. Um, chin chin. Anyway, how's everybody doing? How is lockdown treating everybody? Is everybody good? The sun is shining out there. I know you can't go out there and play, but you know, you can see it through the window. So what's something up here? I'm gonna talk about myself for a little bit. My name is Mark Ashley Dupay. I'm a DJ and club promoter from South East London, Peckham. I do a lot of like nights, um, mainly on the gay scene, London gay scene. But you know, I do do the little straight things too. So you know, you can you might have caught me around a couple of times, spinning some Afro beats, some dance hall, some reggaeton, like a bit of Britney too. Sometimes you never know, you might get that. Um, but yeah, I tend to since I've been in quarantine, I've been just chatting shit a lot in my bedroom and dressing up in various wigs and heels just to, you know, entertain my other personalities. And then Shifts came through and was like, why don't you just bring it onto this platform and just give it to the people? So I was just like, okay, cool, let's do that. So my first guest, his name is Albert. He was actually supposed to be on my, um, can we talk about, talk about my little Rolling Stones? Um, yeah, Bad Girls. Megan, Cesar, and Normani. Um, yeah, Albert was supposed to come on to my podcast, but because of lockdown, it never ended up happening. So he's now my first guest on this platform. We're gonna be, yeah, we're gonna be discussing music, we're gonna be discussing his new single, we're gonna be discussing why he's been described as the most heartbroken guy in Hackney. Like that's quite a serious title to to, like, to claim, I don't know, you know, like, I, don't, I need to know more about that. Why are you so heartbroken but always smiling? Are you crazy? Um, so let's, let me log off of this one here. And let's invite Albert into the room. Albert, you ready? Ring, ring. Oh, wow. Oh. Wow. <laughs> Jesus name. Hi. Hi. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you heavy? <laughs> Bitch. I know I'm sweating, man. Shit. I'm scared. How Listen, are you? The rain, yeah. I've been sweating. I've been silent all day because I'm just like, I was in the room like, oh my God, uh, is this actually happening? What we just need to do is just like mm -hmm. pretend like it's just me and you. Let's forget about everyone else. I can't me. see them anyway. It's all good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I can't <laughs> see the comments. I'm trying to look, not look at it because I'm like, Ugh, like, yeah, okay. it's fine. Anyway. Yeah, let's okay. keep that low. Yeah. It's just me and you on house party. Mm -hmm. Kiki. So how you doing? I'm good. My beard is so long right now as well. Like it's actually great. Yeah, and the melanin's popping. I, I, went, I was outside in the park here, like for a few yeah, hours. This is what like, I'm saying. I need to get out there and yeah, start, you know. Go for your walk. How's your time been treating you? I actually really like it. I'm just at home, chilling, watching movies, watching TV shows, like drinking alcohol. <laughs> and like, yeah. How many times have you got lick up since in the last three months? Is it three months now? Two months? I've been drinking it probably every week, like a few times every week, yeah. Bladder? Just a bottle of wine. 
A bottle of wine here. That's it, a little thing like that, yeah. Yeah, I've been doing that odd bottle of spicy rum and ginger beer here and there and breaking up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but you know, we're socialites because I know you. I what love you doing this because I know that every week I get a text mm -hmm. message from you. You're like, keep it on the guest list for. Don't tell my business. <laughs> this, one loves to, this one loves to party. So the fact that you are locked up in the house like this, I know that you're going through something. Yeah, I'm dying a little bit. I want to party. I want to be outside and drinking and like, but I'm really good. Before okay. we go any further, Please introduce yourself to the viewers. Who are you? I'm what Albert. is your name? My name's Albert Gold. I'm, Where are you from? I'm from Hackney, born and bred in Hackney, um, born London. And bred. Yes, I was born in Hamilton. Um, oh, I'm wow. a singer and I'm, yeah, nice. That hospital is ghetto. <laughs> <laughs> oh, child, the <and> ghetto! <laughs> Trust me, that area's the a lot. Ghetto. It's changed a lot now. It's nice now, though. It's actually all right no, it's now. Fine. You know, it's been yeah. gentrified now. I remember the yeah. first time I ever went to um, Hamilton Hospital. This man had rocked up into A&E and his face was hanging off and it's because his um, his pit dog, pit bull, whatever it's called, yammed off the man's face. But he still brought the dog with him to the hospital and was there stroking it. Are you like it? Yeah, that's another story. <sighs> Um, Where to? <laughs> how old are you, Albert? You never know. You know, like you know, you're the most heartbroken man in Hackney. Young boy, young boy. <laughs> this is an opportunity that you can, like, you know, mm. promote yourself, promote the singleness. Look at this beautiful guy here. Oh. He's from Hackney. You're how old? Twenty nine, twenty nine, twenty nine. Yeah, in his hair are his own. He has. Yeah, hair. that's why the regrowth is real right up, now. They grow out of the scalp. I paid for it, but yeah. <laughs> You're 29. I should yeah. know these things. Why don't you know me like this? What's so happening? So we met, I would say, 2011. Wow, I was 21, yeah. Actually, no, 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 that's a lie. That, that could have been, yeah. It was like no, 2012. Yeah. 2012, I think, I think you were DJing or something. Like you were doing something to do in a club. You were like DJing or I was maybe DJing hosting. At... Dawson Superstore, I think you were there with like Jonathan, mm. Felix, you know the girls. Mm -hmm. the, girls the sister girls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I don't think I real I don't think I, it, it took me a couple of years to realise that you were, when did you start singing? Um, I started music when I I think I started singing when I was like eleven, twelve in church. Um, I was in a choir actually, like a, a choir called Gospel Warriors. And um yes. yeah. And then um after that I started writing songs from the ages of probably 16, 17. Okay. And then I went to music school when I was like 18, 19. So I was kind of like working with musicians and like performing places from the ages of probably 19, 20, yeah. Where did you get to music school? It's called Access to Music, British Academy of New Music, where I met Jonathan as well too. Oh, and yeah. Jonathan's in the comments saying we better not chat his name, so <laughs> <no>. <laughs> We need to just like beep him out. Okay, so then what I want to get onto is what got you in? When did you first realise that you had a, this passion for music? When did you realise you were going to take the singing from the shower mm -hmm. and get into a studio? So from like the age of, I guess, 10, I just was watching like people like Lisa Vandra, Stevie Wonder, all the old ones, like the soulful ones. Okay. And I was like, I really want to be like them. They was on stage singing and people were just screaming and hollering like... Just being sick, and it was on stage, just being like amazing. So I was like, I want to do that. I want to be a singer. So I decided to go into like choir, choir, choirs, and just singing in different places here and there. But I was really bad when I was young. I couldn't sing. Like I was horrible. So you've you've uh, must have learned. You've trained your vocal. Like you've yeah, started, it's a skill that you've you were because yeah, it, was, it didn't come natural to you. No, 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 no. Because I was basically in music um, secondary school, and I was recording. We had a course where we did music. And you could record like your vocals. So I recorded my vocals. I think I was singing Ordinary People or something like that. And it was really. Okay. I was... Your, voice your voice is perfect for that, though. Not when I was 11. It, I've got recording on the <laughs> Horrible. <laughs> like I couldn't do it. I couldn't sing. I couldn't. Oh, well, yeah. But then I just learned to kind of learn, learn about my voice, learn about how, how to sing, how to like really present myself. And then it kind of worked, it clicked when I got older. And yeah. when did you realize that you could write? songs because there's one thing about singing music but mm. to be able to write and mm. express those emotions into a song yeah where did that thing sl slip in um from the age of 13 i think i was just like trying to i had these like cds of instrumentals and i would play them all the time in my room and just like sit down and just write 
about heartbreak for some reason. I don't know why. I had no heartbreak. I had nothing wrong with me. The heart's like, been broken from day. Trust me, from the time the I came heart, up the, the womb, heart, like, it was a... big about sadness. <laughs> <laughs> And the minute you stop, pick up the pen, right? I pick up the pen and start saying, he broke my heart. My heart is never going to mend. I was, like, going to break. Yeah, everything was just, like, heartbreak. So then I started, like, learning about actually songwriting and watching people, like, Mary Triple as well, Lufa, and just seeing how they write songs. And then it kind of just taught me how to really write. But from the age, I think, 17, I could write proper songs. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. about 12, about 12 years now. Yeah. So tell me about wow, first... mode. Tell me about the first... Yeah, the first song you wrote. <laughs> that was that one, yeah? The first song I wrote was like, yeah, I would have been probably 14 and it was about heartbreak. Was, I think it was called he, he Gonna Leave or something. Like, he gonna leave me. I'm never gonna get, get through this. Something like that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I'm never gonna get through this. You know what? I'm there yeah. a bit already. I'm yeah. A bit already. <laughs> I've actually got a CD of me singing it because I've produced a beat for it as well. And I just sung it, like, he gonna leave me. And then the hum was like, yeah, yeah. Like, literally, yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then you go from, so you go to music school, mm -hmm. you start to, you know, to perfect your, your skill and your art. You start yeah. songwriting. Um, when do you record your first track? Um... Well, I recorded my first track when I was in secondary school for GCSE. So like, that was the He's Not Gonna Leave Me. Okay, so that, that. that one, yeah? Yeah, that one was probably the first one. And then when I went to music school, it was more about me developing my voice because I didn't actually know how to use it because I sounded very, I would say, old soul. And I think I was trying to sing like Chris Brown. And I was trying to sing like Usher. And he didn't really... Yeah, I was trying no. to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to be like... Yeah, I was trying to... That, all that type of noise, yeah. <laughs> And it just wasn't working. I wasn't really, it wasn't my voice. So I kind of had to learn what my register was. Yeah, what my sweet spot is as a singer as well. That, yeah, and, then I, and I kind of found I, it. I would describe you as having, um, it's kind of like velvet. It's very like, you know. <laughs> but then out of nowhere, you're going to hit me with some like river falsetto. Mm. I learned that from Lamar actually, you know. I listened to an, an old Lamar. Lamar song. Lamar, remember him when he came out, came out that song, what Dedication. The Academy, um, was that Fame, Fame Academy. Yeah. Fame Academy. What mm -hmm. was his song? Um, dance, dance, dance. I just want to dance with you. Just... That one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The cane yeah, yeah. Little cane little green eyes. Yes, the <laughs> light eyes. Mm -hmm. yeah, he was a bit of a spice for a second. People were very yeah, into was, Lamar. Yeah. And he just disappeared. Well, That's I don't actually know what happened to him. He came up with an album like a few years ago, but I just haven't really listened to it. It's just not that one. No. So no. let's move on now. So mm -hmm. after, it's been about, what, 12 years now you say you've been doing this. Mm -hmm. I've gone through your music collection and you've actually got like, you've got songs. Hold yeah. on a second. You've got a lot of songs. So you've just you've realized now where your register is when you were, when you want to sing, yeah. You're perfecting the um the songwriting skills, yeah. Where do you feel like you sit in genre in genre type? That's actually an interesting one. I guess I would say it's soul, pop, and a little bit of alternative stuff as well inside of it as well. Um, I definitely would say it's just popular music. I don't really know where it fits. That's kind of a thing, because I think you were talking to me about like artists and like being black and gay as well mm -hmm. in the music industry, where they kind of put you in a class where you, you're an R&B singer or you're a soul singer. Okay. Um, and I feel like with me, it's more, it's definitely those elements there, but it's like, it's definitely pop band, it's definitely alternative and maybe avant-garde kind of, there's that different things it as is. well. Yeah, there's de like, different there's elements. Like, like House of Cards is so different to like, satellite okay. yeah it's so different to all this what's time my track? Huh? all this time all this time yeah. which is then different to like handcuffs yeah yeah a lot of different like, you've got music that to be honest I'd... when you really blow oh, people be shook they don't realize what is well, like, oh. what you're coming with like you've got a whole library of music which is like at top level Oh, thank so, you. Thank you. Let's talk about your third 
you got your third EP. Yeah. Mood. Your mood. Mood. Mm -hmm. What was the mood behind mood? <laughs> what was the um, inspiration? So I basically wrote for the last probably like eight to nine years, I've been writing songs and working with different producers. And there was one producer that I worked with, Sasha Scarbeck, who basically worked with like Adele, Lana Del Rey, Miley Cyrus. He's done quite a lot. Okay. The, and the, the I, big I girls. Know, yeah, the big girls. So I worked, worked with him for like a few years, actually, and just writing songs. And then um, we basically made Satellites and Into the Wild and Don't Let Me Go. And um, just been writing. This last Satellite was ne never meant to come out until... I was going to hold on, hold that song until like a few years, but... I was like, fuck it, let me just bring it out. I think the EP is just very much like a different mood for me. Like, you've got Ghost, which is a really heartbreak song. You've How got many songs are on this EP? Remind five. Me. Five. five. And, it's, it, and it's an interlude as well. So it's like six, kind of. And then this satellite is the third release from this. Yes. The third, so we and, have... the the third and the last release off of that EP. Yeah, yeah. then the EP is going to okay. be out in July. In July time, mid, mid July. So I want to play a bit of satellite. Is, is it? Is it? Is it? Is it gonna like cut me off? Like if you play a Beyonce track? No, no, no. I don't. Well, I don't no. Well, it's. We'll try and see how it goes. I don't know. Well, let's like, try. Let's try. Let's try. <laughs> what are going on here? Mm. Okay. It's... Can you hear it? Yeah, I can hear it. And I, <laughs> I'm so done with you. <laughs> I like. Oh, hold on. Who said that? I know. Look. Imagine like Route 66, yeah. in, like, a Cadillac, yeah, mm -hmm. convertible, okay. driving down Route 66, and like you know, like Priscilla Queen of the Desert, like just camp. Maybe think Joanna, you know, that that video of Joanna Scammer, she's just there. yeah, you're riding down this fucking the satellites are there. Can you see my vision? Yeah, I can see maybe like freeing. Yeah, that's, that's kind of basically what the song is. That's but I know is. that the song's got like the song lyrics. Talk to us about satellite. Where was you at when you were writing satellite? Because I read an interview and you're basically like, this is one of your most, this is your, your most favorite song you've written. Yeah. So I had a relationship where I was like really young, 20, and I met someone that was a lot older. And we broke up because I was trying to be with someone that had like a grown man's like lifestyle he had kids a kid at the time and you were a step daddy yeah but i was young and i was trying to be like those ride or die chicks that was just, like there for them and it wasn't working and um i broke up we broke up and then a few years later he came back and i was kind of in my own space doing my own thing and I wanted to write a song where I was, it kind of gave me the answers because I kind of was still deciding, should I go back with him? Or should I love, should I just be in a relationship with him? And um, I wrote that song just basically to tell myself, no, go live your best life over there. And I love you. I'll give you a sat nav and a satellite and you can just go and find your way. <laughs> and and away, away from me. <laughs> away from me so I can live my best life. And that was basically the song. And I'm, I love it. I love singing it. <laughs> Do you find songwriting therapeutic? 100%. Every time I'm upset about something, anything small, I'm like writing a song about it. If I'm upset about anything, I'll write a song and I feel better. Like straight away. So somebody needs to treat you right so that you can start writing some songs. Find me him. 
<laughs> way I back. Don't know Where what to is say it? To you because I like, don't know either. You're a good looking boy. Mm. There ain't no tea on the streets about you. I so know. Why, so maybe you're just picking the full full ones. I am, um, and I was looking for like yeah, dickhead, and I was just finding them everywhere. They was coming through the creek back, like, that little answer. Hey, where's Albert? Where's Albert? All the time. But like now I'm free. I feel better. <laughs> okay, so are we gonna get some freedom songs? Um, do you know what I do like being? <laughs> I'm, I'm so miserable. I do like being a little, bit, a little bit miserable about certain things. But I will write some happy songs. All this time is happy though. All this time is a really happy song. I love all this time. Yeah. So yeah. all this time, <laughs> like find him. All this time he performed at my event Apple Tree back in mm. the day. And mm -hmm. I feel like that's the first time I properly heard you like sing. Like I'd heard you your recorded stuff, but I'd never heard you live. And yeah. like I feel like I'm still like gassed off of that one performance. Yeah. I was meant to come and see you at was it Society? The social. Um there was one at the social and we had a, a like a um live show. I think it was like January every time when when House of Cards came out in like a my own like headline show as well. And yeah, the social it was, yeah. So yeah, talk to really me good. about House of Cards because that's another track as well. That's the same it's about the same boy. <laughs> the same boy. <laughs> yeah, it was. I don't know why I write so many songs about that idiot. But anyways, um it was about him. Like it, it basically was what I was trying to do. I was trying to create a house of cards, or, like a, a loving house with him, and it just didn't work. It just ended up being not real. But um I'm just like song... telling him that like I'm away at your door. Yeah, like, pass the topple, and you can watch them burn or something yeah. like that. Like, 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 yeah, like, exactly. But I just Jesus. said yes, and in that order. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many songs have you written about this one guy? That was one. There's only like two or three. The only two or three. The rest of them are about like dating life. Like, Ghost is literally about dating because I've been ghosted a few times and that. Uh, so I was worried about that, and a few friends of mine have been ghosted too. So I just wanted to write a song about that particular moment. Honestly, right. <laughs> So, what I want to now talk to you about is how have you felt with this track? Yeah. Releasing it in lockdown, like I was saying to you earlier. Like, yeah. obviously, yeah, normally you get to like promo it, you go around and gigs. Are you, finding it, are you finding it difficult or has it just made you think out of the box with how you're going to like approach this sing like the single and the EP when it drops? Well, initially, I wanted to release the satellites after a few years. I was still wanting to hold on to it for a good more few more years until I had actually a video and a big like like production thing behind it but um I just felt fuck it we're in lockdown right now people are feeling a bit down might as well put a song out that makes you feel a bit strong about yourself yeah, and, like, yeah okay you know what I mean so I was like fuck it it's my I'm allowed to tour in this yeah I think we can uh, okay 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 so, <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking so I thought, like, yeah, just write a song put a song out that everyone's gonna like feel happy about and just be in a good mood about so that's why I did it so when does the EP drop? July? Said 17th of July. 17th of July. I wasn't about to say that, actually. I'm supposed to hold off until, like, later on, but it's fine. It's okay. fine. I ain't Beyonce, so it's good. good. And, thi <laughs> and this is going to be, this is going to be your last... EP out of three. Of three. Yeah. So we yeah. had, you started off with Oxy Oxygen. 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 That's the first yeah. one. When did that get released? That was, like, 2017. Okay, so, so well, three, Yeah. Months. And then we had um, Second, which is the second EP. Second, that, yeah, the second and that EP. was 2018. And then we have this one, which is 2020. It's been a while. Do you have a favourite EP? I thought this one's going to be the best because it's been well received the best, actually. And um, I feel the songs are more me, where I'm at right now, too. Um, but I, I love Second. If you, have, if you heard a song called Miserable, mm -hmm. it's literally me just saying the most shit on that. I love that song as well. So that's kind of my favourite song. I have all the songs I've ever done. And Satellite as well too. But, yeah. So is there an album in the works? Like, how does it work? Do you have, like, a collection of songs that you will put towards the album? Or are I you don't... thinking of... I, I don't... Like yeah. You've got albums of songs. There's, like, enough yeah. songs to create an album. So, yeah. Like, yeah, so talk to me about that. Because I've always waited, wanted to wait to, until I got like a deal or a sign it will happen and things are, have, are been happening right now. Mm -hmm. But I've always wanted to just kind of take this time to really be free and just make, make music and put things out and like see where it goes. And um, so right now, there might be an album, maybe in the future. I'm waiting to see when it's the right time for me to 
really put one out. I really want it to be a big thing. I don't want it to be a thing where I'm just still like independent. I want, I really want something to happen where it's like a big You've got the machine behind you. Yeah, definitely, and it's definitely yeah. coming. Like after House of Cards, have done so much stuff is happening right now, so I'm really happy about. It. Has has the current lockdown affected like? Forget about the EP, just in general, with like the same with things that were in the pipeline for 2020. How has lockdown affected that? Or is everything pushed it to just go once we're out of it? Yeah, I feel like once we're out of it, it's all good because I can still put music out, I can still do some live covers and also like collaborate with other artists online as well on Instagram Live. So I'm, it, it has stopped me from like performing in a live show. Mm -hmm. But I still can do so many. The internet's such an amazing thing to do, so I can actually just go on, go on live stream and just, like, sing to anybody. And I feel like that's what I've really discovered, obviously, since being in lockdown, is that there's so much that you can do from your house. It's just about yeah. that you've got the correct equipment, and yeah. as long as you've got your people to support you, mm -hmm. then you're cool. Like, literally, three months ago, I never would have thought about doing a platform like this in my bedroom. It did so well, though. I'm so happy for you to do this. Like, it's so sick. So like, I'm like, I'm hoping, like, this can take off. And then, like, do you yeah. know what? Like, we don't need to be in offices or in studios. We can do everything from your yard. So when 100%. we do finally get released out of this, what's, yeah. the, first thing, what's the first thing you're doing? I am going out to drink more of this. All this and on that night, let me <laughs> cut myself real quick. That's I can't wait to go outside and drink some more. Oh my god, and party and have some bass in my head. Like, oh, that's all I, I can't it. wait. I can't party, wait. Party, mm -hmm. find a couple, couple boys, mm -hmm. write some new songs, <laughs> write some new songs, <laughs> and gig like work wise. Is there anything lined up already? For we were meant to have a live show in July. But obviously, because of what's happening right now, there's no, there's nothing. So next year, hopefully, it'll be live show and me promoting more stuff. I've got two collaborations that I'm putting out. There's a song coming out next month that I've collaborated with another uh, artist called Drew the First, who's okay. no one's heard of yet, but you go no. hear it soon. And there is another collaboration that I've done, Chili Palmer, which is another EP thing, as, as well as there's another EP, an R&B one that I've done, which is very like Summer Walker, very Kalani kind of vibe. So there's a few things coming out. I'm not stopping. <laughs> this is quite good, actually, because one of my questions was going to be, if you could collaborate with anybody in the world, who would that person be? And I would like one who's alive and there's okay. one who's dead as well, if you could rewind uh, time. Can I have a few people or just one person? This is one time. You can have as many as you want. <laughs> well, I would... Like, as single-wise, I definitely want to work with, like, obviously Beyonce, but that would never happen. But I would love to. Right, you never, never know. Are. Listen, but you never... a lot of people in our circles. Yeah. Like, Emily K wrote bloody Hold Up True. for Beyonce. Like, True, and that's a you be like, we're not, You're not that many degrees away from Beyonce. We really want it to happen. So let's... Okay, so Beyonce. Well, okay, Beyonce. Um, I would love to work with Summer Walker. I would love to work with... Do you know what? I really love Mark Ronson because what he done with Amy Winehouse on the last album, for the second album okay. that he made. Yeah. I really want to work with him as a producer. Um, I love Quincy That's Jones. That's quite interesting. Yeah. Most people love Frank over Back to Black. I'm, I'm a weird one. I love Back to Black. I, 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 okay. I feel her on that. Like I feel that, that the darkness is in her. Like I really, okay. I love Frank. Frank is sick. Frank, Frank is sick. Sick. But Back to Black is my like yeah. I listen to that okay. and I feel the darkness in her spirit. I'm like, yeah, I, I'm the same bitch. <laughs> okay. So we've got Beyonce, yeah. we've got Mark Ronson. Mm -hmm. um, Sam Walker. Uh, Sam I would Walker. Love to work, I'd love to work with... Do you know I'd love to work with Emanike. I would love to okay. work with him. He's sick. Um, oh, there's so many people. Um, obviously, Drew the First, he's coming. Uh, Amy? A Amy Winehouse, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. But she's, oh, oh, yeah, she's gone, but she's passed. She's she's gone, she's gone. Gone. Look, look. Um, someone in the comment section has said, um, Michael Melage, also known as JJ Jonathan, who would you say no to as a collaboration? Ah, you're me! I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I've not signed any trouble. Um, 
Who'd I say no to? Isn't it? Why are you saying mix up, Jonathan? Isn't it? Trying to uh, make me just get... Trying mm, to sabotage uh, the boys' career already. Just, some, like, no, just started, right? Like, with me. Um, who'd I say no to? I would say no to... Nobody. I'm actually working with a lot of people. Just no, there's no one... I don't know. Well, yeah. Them... Like the basic Sally's. Yeah, the ones that don't really do music. Pro... Well, that's actually really what I'm going to say. They don't do music... Yeah, people that don't actually take it seriously and they want to take a little bit of money off, I would actually want to work with artists that actually do art and make music. So, earlier on, I was scrolling through your, um, your story. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got to this section where you were like, um, when they tried to block you from the story um, so that you can't view it, but then you go and find the internet site so that you can view what you want to see. Um, yeah. What, what was going on there? Who are you talking <laughs> so hard? I'm not going to tell so you the, the person. I'm not going to tell you the person is, but all I'm going to say is that I was on my stories and my friend messaged me. I was like, have you seen this thing? And I was like, what? So I looked at this person's story and I couldn't see their stories. And I was like, I can't see their stories. She was like, well, I can. And I was like, oh, how come I can't see it? And she was like, well, you can go on this website and you can find out what is on it. So I went on this website, type their name on it, and it comes up with all their stories. You can download their stories as well. <laughs> so I went to look at I... her gadget. Mm -hmm. Trust me, a bone collector. And I the put it all collector. in my little purse. Yeah. Right, so for people who don't know Albert, yeah. or who don't <laughs> do know Albert, you could be out with Albert. You might not even be out with Albert. You and Albert Trust. are the same club, yeah? It could be on and Instagram Albert will be in the watch. corner in your business. And he'll be there like, no, you know, you, you are the charade Whitfield. I'm that one. I love to, and I love to go in the corner like this and stare and like watch something happen in front of me. Yeah, I'm so sorry. And Mark, I've done it to you a few times. <laughs> You've done it to me a good few times. Sometimes I get to watch over my shoulder just to make sure that you're not recording anything. I'm sorry. So I want to touch back on something. I didn't really um, touch on it as yeah. much as what I wanted to. Mm -hmm. As a young gay black man releasing music in a quite like um, heteronormative industry where you know like everything is everything is marketed towards like the straight community, yeah. how do you as a young gay black man f find like how do you fit in? Like, do you find does it pressure? Do you feel any pressure? Are people accepting of you? Do you feel like you've got to like um, assimilate or kind of like? Yeah. Do you I mean like reflect what's there or are you in a place where you feel comfortable and you've got the support enough to kind of like express who you are as a as a gay man? I think when I first started doing music from when I first started writing music and releasing it from the age of like twenty one, twenty two, I felt pressure not to basically reference him or be like too feminine on stage or certain mm -hmm. things like that because I was told not to in okay. like by injury people. But I feel I feel growing getting up older and be, becoming older as well. I'm just being like comfortable with my own skin it's been easier for me to just kind of just be myself and fuck it and not really listen to anyone but myself. So right now, no, we, we, we're in a space right now where we have people that are, there's a lot of queer people out now They're doing right. music. So I'm really happy about that. So now it's making me feel more comfortable to kind of just be myself and just do what I want. Yeah. Do you want to be seen though as a queer artist or do you just want to be known for your music? Because obviously mm. sometimes the world we live in, we've got to put labels on everything. Yeah. The minute, the minute everyone finds out that you're queer or gay, people then feel the necess it necessary to put that word always before your yeah. name. Is that something you have any issue with, or is it something that you would um you would embrace and you would? I would embrace it. Yeah, I wouldn't feel any problem with it at all. I feel like I do want my music to speak for itself and I, and sometimes putting a label on yourself sometimes it puts you in a box and you can't like maneuver out of but i'm happy for someone wants to call me that then cool i know who i am and i do my mm -hmm. music and i know where i'm going with it and that's kind of what i want to do but if someone's like you're a queer artist and cool call me that i love it <laughs> you know what i mean let's talk about the fact that you are the most heartbroken man. In I don't know why someone wrote that. It's because I, I think because all my songs are quite like emotional and like really in my feels. Like I, I write songs up about things that I've gone through and everything's kind of kind of really emotional. Look, when you meet you in person, that I'm happy. Like, you're happy. Yeah. Well, I smile a lot though, but in in science, different. Like I, I think a lot of artists like, guys, yeah. There's a lot of things that I feel and like I say inside of myself and I write songs about, but in like. I'm on the street, I'm smiling, I'm happy. I don't want to be, like, really sad all the time. 
But internally, yeah, I'm, I've gone through quite a lot of battles. I think everyone else is like, in the world, so, you know what I mean? Well, I'm just going to turn to the viewers quickly. Oh, God, he's, what, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know, is there, anybody in, um, is there anybody currently in listening who has a question for Albert? For me. Let's see, let's give them, let's give them. Yes, Smokey Robinson, we see the tracks of your book. I <laughs> Come on, Jonathan, give me a question to ask. Give me a question give to ask. This one I love to like. <laughs> because I learned these ones, I learned these ones are mix up. Trust your mix up friend them. Too... Awkward Oh my God, Evan's here. Wait, they... Right, so you, oh, my oh, sister. Do you... Right, so, Awkward, who will be on the show next week, also known as one part of Graham. Oh, my, my, girl, my, my best friend. Your best friend. <laughs> Do best you friend. feel you're most honest when you're writing? 100%. That's the only time I can actually really say what's on my mind. Because if, if I say what's on my mind in, in general, I feel like people be upset. Sometimes. Okay. So it's yeah. easy to express it with the pen. Yeah. Put it into a song and then sing it. Mm. Have, you ever yeah. performed, have you ever performed any of your songs live and it's really hitting you, like, what the song was about. Yeah, there was one time, I, I think I sung Miserable, and I was singing, and people were, like, singing back to me, and I was just, like, I got really emotional. Like, I, was, I wasn't going to cry, but my heart felt, like, doo -doo. and it was, like, a lot to it. But um, there's a few times, yeah, definitely, especially when the people are singing back to me. All this time, it's definitely a song that people, like, make me emotional about when they sing back to me. Mm -hmm. Have you ever spoke? Have you ever sung a song with Awkward? Have you two ever... We we done little songs here and there, yeah. We did. There's a lot of like little medley, medleys that we done with um her and Jonathan as well. Like her and Jonathan, we used to always sing together, and do harmonies. We actually done harmonies the other day. Like, they came round during lockdown, and um, we all just like just like harmonising and singing with each other. It was really fun. We sung weak. We sung like bare R and B songs. There, that, there is yeah. actually quite an interesting question here from Shibs. Mm. Hi, Shibs. She um Shibs asks. Have you performed a song and your ex was there? I performed a song where, not, that, not the one I sung about Satellite Smith, no, not him, but there was a song that I was singing about. I think it was Miserable I sung that. And, and basically someone that I was dating that upset me at that particular moment came and heard the song. And they came to me after and was like, was that about me? And I was like, mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm sorry. And they apologised and everything as well. But yeah. So if you go on like my second EP, type miserable, you hear the song and you understand what I mean. What's handcuffs about? Oh, um, <laughs> ow. You're nasty. You're trying to make it nasty. It wasn't actually really nasty. It was like fine. It was just basically about being tied down to someone that you want to be free from. Okay. That one of my friends were going through and I just was like, let me write something about it. Well, yeah. um, before we wrap this up, I just want to let you know that yeah. if at any point, Need anyone to do backing vocals for you? Come. I actually want to use it for one of my videos, like, soon. Definitely. Because I can, you know, I can throw a little, like, shibby do 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 and ska da 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 It's there. <laughs> it's there. Like, I can skit and scat all over the truth. Do it. Well, I can give yeah. you some, um, and all you got to do is dream. But like, I'm going to be there just doing oohs and ahs in the background. Like, you know I mean? I'm down. I'm actually 100%. After this whole thing's done, then come. come and, and, I can dance, and I can dance too. Yeah. I can just be giving you, like, you know, like... like so just keep that in mind. I'm going to be, will. like, I'm going to be working on my pen. But you need to come to a show. You haven't come to a show yet, bro. You yeah, haven't you come to a live show. Yeah, I was going to... I remember. I was like, yeah, come to a live show. Yeah. Don't call me out like that on my own show. But you need to like come to a live show. <laughs> <laughs> call me out like that. <laughs> Bitch, I created a whole show for you. I know, but you need to come to a live show. Okay, no, listen. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's there. Okay, so in Janu January, February time, then come. I'm gonna literally okay. tell everyone. In I'm hoping that we're not gonna people. be locked down. I'm hoping we're not gonna be locked down for that long. I heard that it's going to be, well, going out and, like, socialising with people probably up until maybe January, February time. That's what I heard. But I don't know if it's true. That's what I heard. Well, I really, really wanted you to sing a song for us. I'm not going to. I've been drinking all this. 
Can't you just give us like a little, just like, no. just the chorus of Satellite. Come on. Everyone go on, go on my iTunes and Apple Music and listen to my song. Yet, I'm not let's do all the important shit before we log yeah. on. Because I'm not singing. Right, if you want to <laughs> stream Albert's music, you can stream it on all streaming platforms, including Apple Music, Spotify, mm -hmm. um, YouTube. What's that Beyonce one? Beyonce and Jay-Z one? Tidal. Tidal? Yeah, he's on Tidal as well. Everything. Are you being serious? Yeah, he's on Tidal. Okay, I need more money. <laughs> you got that Jay-Z back I got that Jay-Z mother PRS money, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> All right, and where can we find you on Instagram to follow you? If you type in Albert Gold one and you find me. Albert Gold one on yeah. Instagram. Albert Gold across all streaming platforms. Yeah. The songs are lovely. Thank Make sure you. you tune in to my favourite one is... Why well, I always forget the name of it? All This Time. All This Time. I pray for someone like I don't know you. what's happening, but yeah. <laughs> Hey, 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 oh, I'm so vibes. Thank you. Thank you for being my first guest. I hope I asked all the right questions. Yeah, that's good. I'm going to watch every Monday. I'm going to watch you every Monday. Every Monday. It's going to be really fun. I'm here. Yes, tune in next Monday. Actually, next Monday, I've got Awkward on. Yeah, my sister. That's my guest. Yeah. And I'll also be joined by Lee Gray. And apart from Lee Gray, that's it for now. I don't know if I'm going to... Who's laughing at that? <laughs> look, at, look at these people laughing at me. Laughing at me. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, I was singing. Yeah. It's been amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Big love. We're all going to support you. Remember, oh. guys, you saw him here first. Because I ain't going nowhere. Ain't going nowhere. I'll be doing the proper interview with him next time on BBC One Extra when I've got my own little slot. Manifest that. Yeah. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Right. Nobody going nowhere because we're not done yet. Right. So... Should we do this? Should we do this little quiz thing? Should we do it? If I get some like thumbs up in the comment section, then I'll do it. If not, I'm just gonna wait till next week and I will roll it over to next week because typical. Everybody said that they're gonna tune in and no one's bloody here to be seen. Right, Michael, I'm gonna call you. Yo! What's up? What's up? How you doing? How you I'm doing? Good. How are you? Huh? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I ain't spoken to you in a hot minute, babes. I know. I know. It's been a while. I feel like the last time I spoke to you, we were all together. Me, you, Albert, everybody was on house party. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was, week that was like weeks ago. There was about six of us. Yeah. How's, um... The million dollar question. How's lockdown been treating you? Boring. I'm bored. Boring. I'm bored. Me and Albert went to the park earlier, though, I'm not going to lie. Oh, today? Yeah. Listen, it's fine to go to the park. People, yeah, exactly. Like, I, as much as I understand why we need to stay in the house or whatever it is, or save the NHS, if people are getting on buses and trains and you can go work with somebody, I think you can hang out with your mate in the park. Yeah, exactly. And everyone, everyone's, like, being respectful and distancing, so... Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are you ready for this? Are you ready for this quiz? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let me get my music ready for you. Oh, have I got a name songs? Oh. Don't ask no questions. I'll tell you now. What? What? Oh, next week, I'll be much better with this shit. <laughs> I know. You teething problems. Don't judge me. Wrong sound effects for anyone. Oh, uh, not a boo. Are you ready for the suspense? I'm ready to swarm. And welcome to my quiz show. Are you ready? Yeah. What category will you be choosing? Beyonce. Have you seen that timer? 
Huh? There's a timer. There's a timer. Where? Right. Listen, I've, I've had this one minute and 44 seconds left. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to end it, but I'm going to start it back. And we're okay. going to do the quiz, yeah? Right, go on. So go everybody on. who's here, make sure you come back in one minute. I've got basically Instagram's about to log me off. I've just got to log off and then start back again. You do really well, sweetie. You do yeah. really yeah. well, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome back to part two of Chit Chat. I am Mark Ashley Dupay, your host for Mondays. Hashtag Mondays with Mark Ashley. If you were tuned in before, this next hour is the competition hour. So, I've got t-shirts to give away by my good friends over at Babes London. I've also got hats to give away and other little goodies, including... These little... Sexy panties. Just do it, babes. Obviously, before we logged off, we were tuned in with um Michael. So is Michael back in the room? Oh, you're back. I'm back. I'm back. Uh -huh. And so you've decided to go with Michael with the Beyonce category. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. And what are you aiming for? What prize would you like? Would you like the hat? Would you like the t-shirt? Mm, t-shirt. Okay. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Question number one. Oh, wait. Albert wants the hat. This is not for Albert. <laughs> Hold on. Are you... What type of scam is this? <laughs> <laughs> What? <laughs> you can't be winning prizes for Albert. Okay, cool. Okay, the 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 t-shirt. The t-shirt, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Question number one: What is Beyonce's lucky? Hold on, lucky number. And do not answer the question in the comment section. What is Beyonce Knowles's lucky number? Four. Correct. Ding. <laughs> Who did Kanye say robbed Beyonce of music video of the year? And for what music video was she robbed of? It was Taylor Swift. Yeah. But I want to say single ladies. Okay, right. So you got three out of five. Okay. Out of six, because you got a bonus. You got a bonus point there. Do I get a bonus prize as well? Right. How many members of Destiny's Child was there? When? How many members? No, do that. Of Destiny's <laughs> Child was there? What in total? In total, how many members of Destiny's Child was there? You have 10 seconds to answer this question. One, two, three, Six. four, five. What's that? Six or five? Are you going with five or are you going with six? Six. That's correct. <laughs> this is tense, you know. What is Beyonce's favourite brand of chicken? Oh, fuck. Now, oh, I'm going to give you a little bit of time to think about this one, yeah? Why, just, is it a lyric? No, just think about it. What am I thinking about is, a li is it a lyric? She sings about it, right? I don't fucking know, Popeyes. I actually don't know. What was that? I don't know, Popeyes, something like that. Correct! <laughs> is it actually? <laughs> you know what, yeah? 
you didn't even really allow that because it took you so long. But yeah, you got it right. See, just Did sometimes you, think about it? you just got to take the time. Right, and the last question is. Oh, come on, technology. Google's premium. No, shish. What is Beyonce's middle name? Giselle. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Now, I'm going to give you an opportunity to gamble and you can get the T-shirt. The hat, the key ring, and the keychain. But if you don't get the answer right, you're going to lose everything. I'll go on, I might as well. In Bugaboo, what do Destiny's Child want to break? His knees. No, their knees. Their knees. Break my knees so I can move. Because you're a burger book, right? I'm going to take that answer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what did she want to break? <laughs> Sorry. The lyrics oh. are, break my lease so I can move. Lease, not, oh, stop. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> All these years, you know, I thought she was saying, break my knees so I can't move. You know what, yeah. break her own knees. <laughs> so many people seem to think that it's knees, but it's not. Um, unfortunately, Michael, you Fine. lost. However... You do get a consolation prize and you'll get a key ring, but you don't get the t-shirt, unfortunately. Nice. Unfortunately. You can enter next week into the competition for the next category and you might be able to win it again. Well, I might just do that then, but the category won't be fucking Destiny's Child songs, will it? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. I'll speak to you later. See you Bye. later. <laughs> Listen. So many people out there call themselves Destiny Child and Beyonce fans, but they don't know the basics. You don't know the basics. Fuming! <laughs> Break my knees so I can't move. Why so deep? No, all she wanted to do was break the contract, honey, so that she could move to a next yard to avoid the bugaboo. Oh my god, the comment sections are blowing up. Hi! Hi. <laughs> I am good. Welcome to, um, welcome to Chit Chat with me, your host, Mark Ashley Dupay. Um, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing okay. I just what went for an aimless walk. What, what are you cooking this week? So actually, <laughs> <laughs> I was about to make this like spinach chickpea a uh, spaghetti thing that a friend sent a recipe for. Looked nice. Can, can we see what's, what, what's being cooked? Sure. Here you go. <laughs> oh, it's a tin of chickpeas. It's a tin <laughs> of chickpeas. <laughs> Delicious. Delicious. And it's going to transform before your very eyes. <laughs> so, um, are you entering my competition? How do I enter? Well, you're here. So you might as well just roll with it. I don't know where everybody is. Um, do you know? Do you know what the competition is? I know that I would like a keyring. Would you like the glow up keyring? Or is it the keyring with the circle on the end? Did you see the picture? Yes. Okay, fine. Um, we've already had the Beyonce round, so now we're left with the Royals, EastEnders coronavirus or a random selection of questions which ones are you choosing do i choose more than one no you, you... Well, okay um what's your I, major, girl? of those options i'm gonna go with coronavirus the coronavirus yes i think i know a few things about that by that girl okay. 
Oh, the gram is popping since since we've gone live with you. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is magnetism. Are you ready? Okay. Question number one. Britain has the highest number of COVID-19 deaths in Europe and is second in the world. What country has the third highest death rate in the West? Italy. What was that? Italy. Correct. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. The, te right. the tension's real, right? That was some good asking of the question. Okay. Next question. If my iPad will commit. What was the date the UK officially announced lockdown? <sighs> Is this a multiple choice question? <laughs> Would you like it to be a multiple choice question? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. You can have the 23rd of March, the 24th of March, or the 27th of March. The 23rd. The 23rd is my final answer. Correct. How many more questions have I got? <laughs> what did Boris Johnson boast about doing before getting the virus himself? Shaking hands. He shook everyone's hands. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Correct answer. What popular brand was the UK COVID-19 step guide compared to last week? You know, I know a lot about this brand. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've got this one. Nando's. Absolutely correct. <laughs> Give it to me. Finish the sentence. How many questions are there? Five. Five, okay. <laughs> you don't just win this shit for nothing. You got to put some effort in. Yeah, really making us work. Finish the sentence. Coronavirus. Shit. It's getting real. <laughs> Is that too easy? No, I'm a genius. Okay. For, a bon for, for the bonus prize to win the T-shirt. <sighs> The hat. The key ring. <laughs> and the lanyard. Oh, he's giving it all. Oh my God, this got real. <sighs> would you like to gamble for a sixth question? Or would you like to stick with your key ring? Will the sixth question also be about coronavirus. Maybe, maybe not. Do you know what? I'm feeling a little playful. <laughs> I'm feeling like I've got this. So do you know what? Let's just gamble. Let's just throw it all out there. Kanye West, in a song, referred to having a light-skinned friend that looked like Michael Jackson. Which popular UK artist borrowed the lyric to describe someone as looking like a light-skinned friend that looked like Rachel Dozel? <sighs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> okay, I can tell you which Kanye song <laughs> we're talking about. <laughs> um, which British artist? <laughs> okay, I'll give you a clue. Hold on. Does anybody in the comment section know what the answer is? Like, don't tell me. Just say yes or no. I know. Nate's right. <sighs> this question fucked me up this week. Right, I'm going to give you a clue. Did, did someone give me a clue? Brush your teeth. Lady Leisha! Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> yeah. Do you know, someone said lady and I was like... Is it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said no clue, but I gave you the clue. Well done. Oh, man, you really put me through the, through the ringer there. I'm going to have to take a seat. Well, you won yourself a babe's t shirt, a babe's hat, a babe's lanyard, and the babe's key ring to go on said babe's lanyard. Congratulations, yeah. babes! I'll take it all. I'll take it all. Thank you for joining me. You are the winner of this. Um, I'll speak to you later. Thank you. Ciao. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, the girl. Hi. Hello. Hello. How are you? Oh, my God. You know what? I'm not bad. Good. This is jokes, jokes, you know. I actually love this. There's a few things I need to smooth it out before we go official with you next week. But I thought I'd just yeah. like to drop in. I'm liking the blonde hair, babes. I dyed it today. I need to go a bit lighter. It's a bit yellow. But well, we'll get there. If you're just tuning in, this is awkward. She's the baddest bitch you don't know yet. But you're about yes. to. Yes. <laughs> you okay I am gas for next week. I've got some sneak peeks and I've got some tunes to play, you guys. Okay, see, this is what I need this. I need tunes to play. Yeah, I've got tunes to play you from the EP that's coming. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> oh, you give me a little, like, live rendition of, of one of them as well. Nigga said live rendition. Hold. Okay, let me think. What? what? Live rendition of what? What song? Like a little acoustic of something. Um. Why do I not know any of my songs? <laughs> hold on, hold the fuck up. Um. What's the song about weed that you sang at Apple Tree? Oh, yeah, that's not on EP, but... Spending all my money All my money Yeah, I love that tune, eh? I'm so excited to really get into it next week. How, uh, how dare Albert's request? How the what? Albert's request about... In love with your hand. Could forget him. I would. Please believe me. And I know that I should. Throw the towel in. Yeah, I'm not singing anymore. That song's hard to sing, bro. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know I'm gonna have a while now. <laughs> right. Let's not give them too much. Um, six kids here. Same time, 6 p.m. I'm Next ready! I'm ready. Me and you, we're going to go back yes, and forth. All right, then, love you. Love you. Speak to you later. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Right, I'm not going to drag this thing out too much. This has been my first show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank you to Albert for coming on and speaking with me. Um, it was cute. Very cute. Thank you to Michael for losing so grace, gracefully or graciously, whichever word we're going to use. But yeah, um, don't worry, we're going to send you a hat. 
Okay, that's oh, was it the t-shirt you wanted. So you got a t-shirt. Ashraf got the full prize. Um, awkward. We'll see you next week. Um, have a lovely week, guys. I hope that you've enjoyed this little hour and a half with me. Um, tell your friends. Next week we're gonna have more competitions, more content, more chit chat. My name was Mark Ashley Dupay. This is Beam IG. Good night.